Hey everyone, this video is to uh, kind of wrap up our polyatomic ion introduction. So we are just about now um, getting into uh, writing names and formulas for chemical compounds. And so uh, what we've seen so far is we've looked at how atoms can turn into ions by gaining and losing electrons, but a lot of compounds involve these substances, the polyatomic ions. Now, these are kind of the top eight. We're gonna see on our placemat that these names can change slightly if we change how many oxygens are here, um, but that's something that unfortunately we just don't quite have time for this year. So let's go ahead and get started with finishing this. So on the back we see it says ions made up of more than one atom or element with an overall charge. We use the example of nitrate. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make ourselves a key, okay? And so I'm going to make a box for phosphorus, a box for oxygen, and then repeat this process with every substance I'm at. Ooh, sulfur. nitrogen, carbon, and hydrogen. So go ahead and copy those down. If you need to pause it, do so. While you're doing so, please find color pencils. Ideally, you should be uh, using a purple, red, yellow, blue, and black. If you don't have those, then you'll just make your key slightly different. It'll just look a little bit different than the rest of ours, and that's fine. So for phosphorus, we are gonna use purple. So I'm filling in that box. Oxygen, we're gonna use red. Sulfur will be yellow. Nitrogen, light blue. And carbon is going to be black. And then we're gonna leave hydrogen empty because we are gonna use the color white for hydrogen, okay? So go ahead and uh, flip over to the front when you are ready. And open the panel for hydroxide, okay? So we've said hydroxide is OH. So the way this substance looks, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and then hopefully stay within the camera frame. Um, the way this substance looks is, we're gonna draw a bracket. So the way this substance looks is we have two atoms attached to one another with an overall extra electron or an overall negative charge. One of those atoms is an oxygen, so I'm gonna color it in red, and the other one is a hydrogen, so I'm going to leave it white. So we're gonna start getting into naming compounds. I'm just gonna throw some out here so we can start to get the idea, but the rest of this week, that is our plan. So uh, using hydroxide, we could have LiOH. Notice that the O and the H are both capitalized. So this would be the chemical formula for this substance. So lithium is in group one. Lithium forms a one plus charge. And we just said hydroxide has a one minus charge. So these two substances together, one plus, one minus, would be attracted to each other. In our uh, videos coming out the rest of the week and activities, we're gonna see kind of how that functions, but that's the basics of it. We want these two to be attracted to each other. And this substance would be called lithium hydroxide. So we basically just take the name of the metal, the name of the polyatomic ion, put them together. Next one, now I'm gonna be throwing some examples up here that might look confusing to you. By the end of the week, they will make sense as to why I did them this way. So the second example I put, calcium. Calcium has a two plus charge. Hydroxide has a one minus charge. Well, we want them to be attracted to each other. Calcium is gonna attract two hydroxide, so that's why I wrote it like this. Again, if that doesn't make sense, give me till the end of the week and it should. All right, go ahead and close that panel and open the panel for nitrate. Now nitrate, again, we're gonna put it in the bracket. Nitrate is a central atom with three atoms attached to it. And this thing overall, again, has a one minus charge, similar to hydroxide. One of these things is a nitrogen, so I'm coloring it blue. The other three are oxygens. So I'm coloring those red. So nitrate is a tiny little molecule um, that has a nitrogen with three oxygens attached to it, and that overall carries a negative one charge. I'm gonna put a couple examples here. Again, we'll talk about why they look the way they look later, but we just want some examples when we go back to this. 
So putting sodium with the ion nitrate, we get NaNO3 or sodium nitrate. Let's put gallium with nitrate. Gallium has a three plus charge, so I would need three minus ones. L-L-I-U-M, nitrate. So you can see when I write these in the name, nothing's really changing about them. Sometimes we're having to add more copies of them. This one needed one, this one needed three. So again, you don't necessarily need to know exactly what's going on right now, but if you're kind of recognizing that, that's a really good sign, okay? If you're like, okay, this one had, looks like one nitrate, this one looks like it has three copies of nitrate, I wonder why. Well, you'll find out. Go ahead and close that one, move on to phosphate. So again, bracket, I'm putting the brackets there because I wanna make sure we're recognizing that it's not just one of these atoms that has the negative charge or the uh, positive charge. It's the entire thing as a whole. This one has a central atom with four atoms attached to it in four directions. And that overall thing carries the three negative charge that we wrote on the front. The central atom here is a phosphorus. And then we have four oxygens attached, hence the formula PO4. P and then O4 indicates that we have four oxygens. ALPO4 is aluminum phosphate. MG3, PO4, Two. Now, some of these look a little crazy, but don't freak out because this is just magnesium and phosphate. So the PO4 acts as one thing, so we name it as one thing. It gets named by itself, PO4. All right, down at the bottom. So the structure of this one is going to look quite similar. We have a central atom, and then we have four things attached to it. But in this case, we notice that sulfate is SO4 instead of PO4 like phosphate. That is why it has a negative two charge. And then instead of a purple in the middle, we have a yellow in the middle with four reds attached. So a sulfate is a sulfur with four oxygens attached to it that lends, uh, that, that entire molecule kind of leads to an overall two negative charge. We're gonna throw a wild one in here, Cu2SO4, and that is copper Roman numeral one sulfate. And I'm gonna put in parentheses type two, Roman numeral two. You'll know what that means by the end of the week, but I wanna make sure that we have an example here, okay? So again, copper with sulfate uh, comes out, we write copper and sulfate. All right, now moving up to the top right with carbonate, go ahead and uh, open up the carbonate panel on the right-hand side. We're gonna have a central atom with three atoms attached to it. That whole ion carries a two negative charge. That central atom is gonna be black because it is carbon. And then the three things attached are red. Oops, we're gonna need another color pencil. My bad. We'll get there in a second. All right, so CaCO3 is calcium carbonate, which is the official name of limestone. And then K2CO3 is potassium carbonate. Reminder, we're just putting examples here that will make sense to us later, um, but right now, of course, they might be a little confusing. Okay, pause and grab yourself a green colored pencil or green highlighter or something green. I'm gonna use one that has a little bit more actual pen to it. And then I forgot to put chlorine back here, my bad. So on the back, let's add another box with chlorine. And then for me, that's gonna be green because chlorine is a green gas, so that makes sense. Okay, back to the front. So I'm closing carbonate. Chlorate is ClO3 minus, so this is gonna look just like carbonate. Even though it's chlorine, we have one with three things attached to it. 
and that overall thing carries a one minus charge. That central atom is a chlorine. And then the three things attached are gonna be red because they are oxygens. So the examples we're gonna use, I'm gonna do NaClO3. So even though this has multiple letters to it, um, the C and the L are part of one thing. So again, we name it as chlorate. So this is sodium chlorate. And then we have FeClO3-2, and that is going to be iron, Roman numeral 2, chlorine. That's another type 2. That'll make sense once we do our next section. So close that panel, move on to acetate. So acetate's a little bit more complicated, so I'm gonna make sure I leave myself a little bit more room. So with an acetate, we have two atoms connected in the center. Off one of the atoms, we have three individual atoms. Off the other end, we have two, but one of them we'll see has two lines going to it. So I'll give you a second to get that drawn. Well, I mean, you can give yourself a second. You can pause it. Hello. Um, so the two central atoms here are going to be carbons. So I'm going to make those both black. These three are hydrogens, so we're leaving them uncolored. And then the other two over here are oxygens. So I'm going to write right here, this is the format for this version of the ion. CH3, C, one, two, three H's, COO, COO. So that is why uh, it gets written in two different ways because the C2H3O2 is kind of the simplified way, C2H3O2. But CH3COO is actually my favorite because it indicates what the actual ion looks like. All right, so let's use silver acetate. A, G, C, H, 3, C, O, O, Ag, Chiku. Silver acetate. And then I'm going to do calcium acetate, but I'm going to use the other version, C, 2, H, 3, O, 2. Either one is totally fine. It doesn't matter. I prefer this version, but some people get confused with that double O, so it's okay if you want to basically put the two C's together, put the two O's together, and write it like that. And this will be calcium acetate. Now, you'll notice in these uh, formulas that I've been writing, let me open up a couple of these. You'll notice in these formulas I've been writing that all of these ions, which so far have been negative ions, we'll see are the second thing in these formulas. Right? We have a sodium and then we have the nitrate, nitrate, phosphate, phosphate, sulfate, etc. So the negative ion we're noticing, we're kind of recognizing there's a trend there, is always the second element there. Now, for this last one, this is ammonium, NH4 plus one. So in terms of its structure, it's one with four things attached. So what we're saying here is. We have a nitrogen with four hydrogens attached to it, and in that process, we have lost an electron. Overall, we have a plus one charge. Just because it's a polyatomic ion doesn't mean that there's any difference in how the cations are formed. So when we go to use formulas for this, NH4Cl, we'll notice now that, well, wait a minute, all these other ones were written as the second substance in the formula. This one's written as the first one. So there must be some sort of location dedicated to where the positive and where the negative goes. And that is in fact true. The positive always goes first, the negative goes second. We'll reinforce this as we move on. But this substance would be called ammonium chloride. Again, if these names are kind of like making your head spin, that's okay. We're going to do stuff with them. And then the other example, kind of one of the hardest ones, would be this. NH4 in parentheses with a 2 behind it, and then SO4. 
So NH4 has a one plus charge, SO4 has a two minus charge. So again, you may be picking up on the trend about uh, how many of these I needed. I need two of these for one of these, but whatever, we'll do with that, that's fine. And this will be called ammonium sulfate. So SO4 is sulfate, this ion right here. Ammonium is the cation here, the NH4 plus. And so we put those two together, ammonium sulfate. All right. So again, we are absolutely going to be going through how to use these, why we use these, uh, in what order we use these. But I wanted to make sure we had this reference and we were good to go. All right. I will see you guys next time.